Hello my Sockinverse, last review for the midweek and then you'll get the stats cast which hopefully is really quickly done as well. I, before I get going, I actually figure, figured out if I move away with my chair to kind of as far back as possible you can see actually all the shirts behind me which is actually what I would uh, like you to see because I always had the problem when I'm sitting that usually this shirt here is kind of hidden so works out quite well. I actually like the way this looks this time around. Uh, kind of colorful, maybe we could, maybe if it wasn't for the numbers and the numbers determine how I do it, uh, winners and losers, but otherwise if I would switch those two I actually would be quite happy with the way things look like. In any case, uh, we have to talk about the Eredivisie and I'm wearing Ajax uh, and League Earth and later on where we have actually quite a few interesting talking points and none of them are necessarily on-field performance but more of attitudes and misbehavior but you know to do to that later. I'm as I said I'm wearing Ajax and after this round I was a little bit a bit surprised I just checked the uh, ratings that I'm using for my model which is the ELO and the club ELO and the SPI and in the SBI rating of 538, Ajax is the fifth best team in Europe at the moment. Uh, and outside of the Premier League, only Bayern Munich is ranked higher. That's pretty amazing. And I think it's more down to the fact that Ajax is just steamrolling every, every, everyone at this moment. Uh, yeah, they add another five to their tally. So, I mean, we had Sporting. Uh, five, we had Cambuur, nine, and now Fortuna Sittard, five, and it's just, and it doesn't even look hard for them. They are really, uh, if the opposition is worse than them, they're gonna take you to all the sword, and I think this uh, drives up the ratings. At the um, uh, Club they're only uh, number 12, but you know, it's still a rather, rather lofty rating, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be curious how Ajax will perform uh, in the Champions League this time, the time around. As I said, against Sittard, I uh, actually saw a little bit of the game. Bechers, Maserawi and Tadic before the half and then um, late Kudus and Taliafico make it a proper Ajax result. Um, PSV though, after being beaten by Feyenoord, had a little bit more trouble with uh, the go-ahead Eagles from Deventer. Uh, although they took a lead uh, early, early on um, uh, through Kakpo, the 15th, a uh, pretty amazing equalizer from Cordoba from a very acute angle uh, gives the go at Eagles an equalizer and they had chances, they had enough chances to maybe get a second goal but uh, equality to the PSV was a rather back and forth affair. Uh, in the end uh, Van Hinkley had in a corner kick from Kakpo in the uh, 86th minute. Uh, another notable result of course is Twente beating AZ 3-1. Uh, AZ really not getting going. Uh, so that result sees Twente going up who together with Utrecht and especially Willem Dwe are the early surprises of the season. We will see a little bit more about Willem Dwe of what they're made for when they now face um, on the weekend. PSV. Uh, moving on into League uh, um, the midweek round, and I love that uh, that League uh, does it this way. All the games are the same day. We have two slots: one at seven, one at nine. Yes, you have to pick and choose, and maybe I do, I, I don't know if in France they have. Um, like a goal show where they switch back, back and forth which is so popular here uh, in Austria and especially Germany. I absolutely love to do uh, watch stuff like that. Um, so I don't know all the red zone in America but if they had this would be even better. To me few results that are noteworthy is that Lille uh, and Monaco finally get win, win, wins again. Uh, Breton Derby uh, sees not win. Rennes Big wins, biggest win of the round, 6-0 over Clermont Foot. Clermont Foot kind of, after having this good start to the season, kind of coming down at the uh, at the moment. Then a big one, Ajé against Olympique Marseille, nil-nil. Uh, also a little bit stopping the Marseille and Nice losing to Lorient. However, it's the last two games where we have to talk about things. It is not. Trois had a halftime lead completely undeserved against Lyon and Lyon in the second half. Uh, to, did uh, put things right through a uh, first goal uh, from Sheridan Shakiri and then Emerson and uh, Lucas Paqueta. A goal that where I, <laughs> I mean, you could use the uh, line of the box, it was kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of the offside line. Uh, really nice pass from Dembele, just perfectly timed, 
Because a little bit later, one will put another third pack it time and makes three one. However, uh, the big talking point out of this game was that at the very end of the game. Uh, Leon has a corner kick and Paqueta tries to do a rainbow flick over a uh, Toit defender. Kind of a little bit showboating. And the ref, uh, Madame, Madame Frappard, tells him, please do not do this, where he kind of tells her to go, you know what, uh, and she gives him a yellow card. And Neymar, after I says, Jogo Bonito is dead. <sighs> I think it's not the referee, the referee's responsibility to get involved there. However, I do feel that all this showboating, if he would do this, when it was 0-1 down. Okay, and same goes for Neymar. You know, we all know that you're better players, but you know, there's a way to carry yourself. And you don't do this in the dying minutes to kill off a game and show what, 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 what a, a biggest player uh, you are. And I think uh, Mademoiselle Frappard wanted to have a clean game because if that moves on, now he has a tar target on himself and we know how full footballs take care of that. If you show both, we will kick you out of the game. And I think this is what has to get into the mind of players. Yes, we know that to do it. If you want to do this, do this when the game is still in balance, not when it's already decided and you kill it off. Uh, I have to say some, something that uh, annoys me quite some. And speaking of Neymar and PSG, although Neymar is only a uh, sideshow character, uh, Messi of course was injured, that's why he was taking off and blah 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 blah. Uh, PSG was the dominant team in the first half and they actually had the, had the good luck, it was after the Milan game that I could watch the last 10, 10, 10 minutes of, of the game, which was already entertaining enough and then I saw the highlights. Uh, so PSG was dominant, Hakimi gave them an early lead and then probably Mbappé could have had a couple of goals for sure. Uh, however, Kuyate scores a really nice equalizer for Mets and the game is very much showing that PSG is not very well in, not yet very well adjusted and so on and it's very much in the balance and Mets, who are the last place team could have well probably taken a point out of that. But then Mbappe, uh, Mbappe at one point, it seems like uh, instead of playing a ball in the, uh, out, he wanted to chip the goalkeeper in, in, in a way. It's not quite sure whether he, he, he really wanted, but showing his typical attitude, which I love that player after the last World Cup. But over the past two, three years, I can really see that he acts like a spoiled kid on the pitch. And you saw this then at, at, at the end. Braun gets sent off with a second yellow card, something that also set off the Mets coach, who looks like who looks very much thug, like I have to, I have to say. Uh, and his view was definitely, uh, his look was something scary. Uh, and then, basically with the last action of the game, Hakimi, again, a slate winner for a PSG. So PSG, uh, again, get the seventh win in a row, looks all fine, but the team does not look quite right. However, while Celso Rampapé, again, uh, kind of makes either gesture or something at Uk uh, Ukija, the goalkeeper, who is very irate and of course he's hiding behind his players because <laughs> and the Neymar takes it up for him and he gets a yellow card. To be honest, <sighs> Mbappé becomes a player that I I think he goes slowly in the footsteps of Neymar and Ronaldo in behavior. I really hope that uh, Mr. Messi and Mr. Ramos can kick some sense into him because this is not the way how to behave. So this is what I, it's a kind of two behavioral issues in France that take the headlines and I usually don't like talk, 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 talking about that uh, because the league in itself is quite exciting this year. As I said, Statscast will be coming uh, rather soon or maybe when you watch this video it's or, or else if you want to see what my computations are saying, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, drop a line if you want to add anything to what I said to those two leagues and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell so in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day.